Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, I wanted to share with you something I've been trying to like debug at work for the like, past day. Um, maybe you'll learn something from this. I'm still trying to kind of experiment and learn it myself. But basically at work we have a table with about 3,000 items in it. And React can render that um, decently fast, but React plus the third-party library we're using for state management it's causing some slowdowns and I'm trying to figure out why in our work application it's kind of slow. I'm not going to show you my actual like work app or my code for my job, but I have been experimenting with some React code. So over here I have a page with a table with 3000 items in it. And one of these headers, the name one, if you click on it, it reverses the array, right? So if I click on this, it takes about a second or two and then you'll notice everything kind of reverses. So that's kind of the, the thing I'm trying to look at. Um, in our work app, when you click on the header, it takes about five seconds to reverse the, the item. So I'm trying to figure out why that's the case, because when I have a basic React app, it takes about a second or a second and a half. Um, so I'm trying to figure out like, why is React so slow for rendering out a bunch of items and how can I improve it? I know there's approaches out there. There's virtualization, which um, the users want to be able to do command F. So I kind of need all the data on the page um, unless I haven't lo really looked at the virtualization tables. Maybe they have support for command F that searches to your data and will take you directly to the records. But I'm assuming that they don't because virtualization kind of only shows you the rows that are in your viewport. There's also pagination, which isn't an option because again, the users want to be able to do command F. And then there's lazy loading or lazy scrolling, I guess, which again, isn't really an option because they want to do command F. So the really the real fix of this is redesign the user experience and see if the users would be better with having like a filter they can type into but for right now this is what i got and i got to figure out a solution to kind of make it faster so this is like the react application um and then i have another approach let me show you the code real quick for that so if i go to the index we got a page that renders out 3,000 items pushes it into an array and then i basically set that to state here and I have a function called reverse, which will just reverse that array using the JavaScript reverse method. And then over here, I have a typical just T body. I map out all those records and print out the rows here. And on click, we have a reverse. So all three of these pages I'm going to show you have pretty much the exact same code, but I'm doing some stuff under the hood with custom hooks to try to make it faster. So this is the first approach. You know, it takes about a second or two to actually reverse it. Um, and this is just with fake data. So as the data gets more realistic, it takes longer because there's more text in your messages. And I think, yeah, there's just more text everywhere. So the other approach, I have an inject endpoint. And what this is doing, if I were to click this, notice that it's a little bit faster. It's still not that fast though. Um, and how this is working is I, I'm going to show you the code real quick. I go to in this inject file and what I'm using is a custom hook to basically pass it a callback function, which will generate these rows using lower level JavaScript. Um, so let's actually look at that. Um, there's a custom hook here where I pass it the rows of people and I pass it a callback and how this hook works is I basically take a ref or I, I'm going to return a ref where I can put on the T body. Let me show you that. Let me go to this. So down here at the bottom, I have a, T body and I put a ref on it so I can kind of append elements to it and clear it out if I want to. In the custom hook, I basically, every time data changes, like anytime the, the row is reversed, I have a use effect listening to that and I just clear out the T body ref. And then I kind of loop through everything, generate a big thing of HTML, and then I append that to the page. So this is a little bit faster. And if I was better at vanilla JavaScript, I'm sure there's a more efficient way to do this. Um, but yeah, if anyone knows, let me know. So this works, like I said, it's it's a little bit faster, it's a little bit more responsive, but there's still some delay. Um, and I when I do this in my work application, it's actually a, a decent a decent amount faster because I don't know, there's like something else going on behind the hood that's slowing everything down. Which led me to this third approach, which I'm kind of experimenting with, which is inject rows stream. So basically, let me go ahead and click this. And notice that it basically switches over instantly, right? It's pretty quick, um, which is great. But there is something going on under the hood that I need to share with you. It's actually appending the data like in batches, okay? So notice as I keep scrolling down to the bottom of the page, data is still being written. So 
my idea is that when a user sorts on the row, there's going to be some delay from them clicking on the header and then doing Command F to find what they want. Um, and then we could also put a spinner or a loader saying like loading data and just say I put a spinner and when it's done loading all the data, I could just clear that. So that's a better user experience because the moment they click it, they get feedback and they get a spinner that I'm probably going to put somewhere that says like, um, wait, your table is still loading, please wait or something. Um, that's the approach. I'm trying to maybe experiment with my real work app to see if it kind of works for the users. So let's go to this other method. So if I go to inject fast, it's very similar to that last inject function or page I showed you, um, except for we're using a use inject rows stream. All right, so the difference here, and this is a little bit more complicated, is we create basically a promise chain and we keep on chunking up or let, let me rephrase that we get the rows and then using the low dash chunk method i split them up in, by batch sizes okay so we have like 3000 divided by 200 gives you like 15 different batches or chunks i call them and i basically have a method for taking a chunk of items and just appending it to the page so very similar to that last code i showed you and then i do f append the first chunk because what if they pass in um well i pin the first chunk just to make it quick and then I have a for loop that loops over all the remaining chunks and keeps calling this a pin chunk method. So that's going to append the remaining chunks, but I do that in a timeout to give the browser some time to like process and not block the entire page. So, you know, the timeout set to like 200, I've been experimenting with like, what is the best batch size and timeout size to make this more like responsive. And that's about it. And one thing I had to also add in is when this effect Kind of changes when the rows get reversed i need to basically stop the current promise chain that's going so i added this force stop the true here so that when this effect kind of unloads i can set this to true which prevents this from appending more elements because i was getting like duplicate elements put into the dom and i just wanted to stop the previous um anonymous function from kind of running and appending a bunch of extra data so that's the approach I'm going with. Um, I think what I could potentially do to make this faster is do some type of ex exponential chunk increasing. So the first chunk could be like 100. So it's really quick when the user first clicks. The second chunk could be maybe 400 items. The third chunk could be like 1,000 items. And the last chunk could be just everything else. And that would at least give that you know really quick feedback of you click on the header and your data changes. But the problem is, is that this is taking like a long time because it keeps on appending smaller chunks over and over again so that's kind of the approach i'm trying to figure out but yeah if you're experienced with react let me know if you have a better solution for this it's just strange how vanilla javascript just runs so much faster uh compared to react like if i do the same approach in vanilla javascript it's pretty quick it's not as slow as react but I mean, obviously that's because React probably doing a bunch of stuff under the hood to like bind data to your DOM elements and do the reconciliation stuff. But yeah, let me know what you think about this approach. Probably a garbage approach, to be honest. I need to just talk to the UX team and have them change the actual design of this page. But you know, the work has to keep going forward and we gotta keep making changes. And this is kind of low priority for some people. So yeah, if you enjoyed watching this video, hopefully you learn a little bit about writing custom hooks and like trying to make tables a little bit faster. I'm having fun just experimenting with this code. But yeah, give me a thumbs up and have a good day and happy coding.